Okay, let's take a look at it from the face-on angle now. Coming into the ball with slightly palmer, palmer flexed wrist. It's also, watch how I'm going to get there. If I got there from the neutral, 90 degree arm roll or pronation of the left forearm and a slight palm reflection. That's how I'm getting there. That's what's left to put back into the formula on the way into impact. Just like this. See, I am rolling this arm bone back, letting go of the contraction here and starting to swing into dorsiflexion. Square it up. Continue to dorsiflex past the ball. At this point, as I keep turning, the club is exiting around to the left. The face is still square to the arc. Okay? So you can see you, what, what you guys may not have seen. it. You might have seen it out of context when I do a move like this. You're not seeing that I am not flipping the club over. I'm bringing the club precisely square to square through the impact zone. Here, Palmer flex. Now, dorsiflex, the left hand. Get to about 30 inches after the ball. This is the fastest point in the swing if there was no collision. The club will be coming right up between my arms. So the right hand will be in slight palmer flexion, the left in slight dorsiflexion. Okay, after this point, as I continue to move the wrists that way, now, if I didn't roll this arm over, the club would have to finish like this in a huge chicken wing position and I'd never be able to attain the speed. So this whirling motion must have the left arm turning externally at the shoulder and folding as my left wrist goes into full dorsiflexion. Two hands, we're going here, flap through, and now right arm bone rolling over the left, folding. Now I'm on the plane again here, and even the finish is on the plane at the end. Even the wrap, most of the wrap around of the shaft is still at this same diagonal angle. Let's look at the right hand. Turning through, dropping it to last parallel. Big time dorsiflexion. But I am, even though I look dorsiflexed here, I've actually already long ago given the signal to uncock the dorsiflexion. Coming into the ball, you're now seeing the reaction and the response right here, a little bit of lead forward. So I'm coming in, palmer flexing. The right forearm does not have to open or close at all because it was never really opened in the begin with. It was just dorsiflexed only and folded. So in the right arm, we don't really have to roll the arm bones into impact. However, once I've done my full palm reflection to here, the club face is now square to the arc, exiting left and around like it's right on a track. And now the forearm starts to do its rolling over the top into this position here. So my forearm has now rolled over the top of the folding left in order to keep the club whipping and accelerating to high speeds while yet still keeping the blade square to the arc. So um, I am releasing the club freely. I am not ever advocating this motion here, which would simply twist the blade without advancing the club head so that we wouldn't get any speed out of that. I could only hit a ball about a foot if I advocated that. As, uh, instead, I'm advocating that instead, keeping the ball straight. In the right arm, I'm advocating that. And again, the left arm from this angle, slight palm reflection. And you see where I'm finishing up here. There absolutely was 180 degrees of turn in the bones of the forearm here, but I am also flapping into dorsiflexion as well, which kind of slows down the rotation of the club face and breaks it up into a longer 
amount of radians or along the arc, so a slower rate of, of roll, which sets it exactly square to the arc. Now let's take a look at the front angle looking back towards the T. Okay, this is probably the best angle to see everything looking back towards the T. Again, from the beginning, we're looking at first the left hand, last parallel. So I've already pivoted to the left post. You can see my left wrist is bowed into a slight palm reflection, which makes the face look just a little bit shut to your orthodox, but actually square to the arc. From here, as I am rolling the arm bones 90 degrees, I am starting to dorsiflex. You're only seeing the reaction there. I actually started the signal and I got some ulnar deviation from here. I threw back here to arrive in this position. You're only now seeing the reaction and the response. Now from here, rolling the arm bones 90 degrees, starting to, I'm letting go of this palm reflection, starting to go neutral or into slight dorsiflexion. The balls get struck. Now watch this club face. I am not flipping this. Square to the arc, back around to the left, very important. I'm doing this, continuing the slow supination of the forearm while my left wrist continues to dorsiflex and I get to the fastest point in the swing, 30 inches past the ball. If there was no collision, that's your top speed right there. Okay, now you're telling me if I stopped rolling and you told me not to roll my forearms from here, this is what would happen. I'd max out my dorsiflexion and my finish would be a chicken wing, um, totally cutting off the release and a good likelihood that I do it too soon and I, or I don't put enough roll into it and I leave the blade um, wide open, which I've seen people think that they can do this, but they put their thumb on the side of it for a massive hook grip and then they do this motion. They can make it go straight and really low, but they'll never be able to hit a three iron into a green this way or a two iron into a green. They'll hit it too low. So at the end, we're here. Dorsiflexion, arm bones keep rolling. Do you see how the club face is staying dead square to the arc as I'm advancing it? Now my left forearm is continuing to complete. It's a 180 degree roll, but up here. So 90 degrees of the arm, left arm roll to here, 90 degrees more to the halfway through position, in which case momentum just takes it around. Looking at the right hand, again, we're just, we're not looking at any rolling of the arm bones. Pivot to last parallel. Now from here, it's just palmer flex, palmer flex, palmer flex to here. Right forearm in the follow through now starts to roll 90 degrees to match the folding left. Two hands together, looks like this. Rolling the left arm, wrists are unfolding. Ball is struck, square, club face. Keep staying square to the arc. As I flap the wrists, I'm at the point of no return here. I cannot continue the swing on plane unless the forearms now start to cross over high and getting into this finished position here. Let me hit a couple balls for you uh, from this angle now and try to slow it down so you can see uh, the way the wrists are moving uh, a little bit better.
Okay, so TrackMan had that drive. I hit past the camera at uh, 290 yards and about eight yards right of center of the fairway, or right of the center of the fairway. So that's in any fairway in America, even a US Open fairway at 290. It's a really good drive. Um, hopefully I was able to illuminate, maybe make, uh, reveal or get rid of some confusion about what Mike was doing um, what I'm advocating that you do. Um, it's too bad that this has uh, become so misrepresented or convoluted, whatever you want to call it. Um, I can tell by views on different videos that this is the aspect of the Austin method that, that people have the most interest in. So they, uh, they realize that this is a big part of the secret, if you want to call it a secret. Um, so when you, whenever you see me, do, see me doing like this, uh, and people are saying, oh, you're flipping the club over. Well, remember that I'm, I'm, I'm actually not. I'm doing it in such a way here that I'm keeping the blade of the club square to the arc with this method I'm doing like this. Um, it just may not look like it because I'm doing it pretty quick um, and free. Um, so I, I hope this helped. Would you please leave? comments down below. I'd love to get some feedback on this video. Did this help uh, demystify uh, some of the Mike Austin method for you? Or do you still have questions? Is there any controversy still to you? Probably so. But let me, uh, let me help you um, get to a full understanding. Um, share your thoughts with me. Um, as always, thanks to Galt Development Complex for their generosity. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.